Hello class. Hope you're doing well. One more minute and then I'll get started. Uh, Saben que voy a tomar una otra clase de español. Cuando uh, volvemos en la escuela. Por lo tanto, uh, Voy a tener uh, dos clases de español. Voy a tomar uh, una clase, clase de español 1 y una clase de español 3. Porque pienso que uh, esté listo a aprender más. Okay, we have enough people to start. Um, all right, class. Why is that so dark? I don't know, my camera is like, this camera is really wacky lately. Um, I'm gonna turn the light on here. Um, okay, so this is AP Physics 1. Um, the 19th period for um, All right, so today we are going to be talking about um, something called the Doppler effect. Okay. The Doppler effect. So, um, what is the Doppler effect? Well, um, when we're thinking about the Doppler effect, you have uh, two things happening here. You have an emitter or a source of a wave, okay? Um, and the source is emitting waves. And then you have an observer of the wave, okay? And um, the observer in the source are in relative motion, okay? So the source has a speed, which I will call V sub S. So V sub S is the source speed. And then the observer has a speed as well, okay? Um, and that I will call V sub O. All right, um, now the source is emitting waves with a certain frequency, okay? So maybe the source is emitting a frequency, okay? Um, I'll call that FEM for the emitted frequency. It maybe is a thousand hertz, okay? 
But because the source and the observer are in relative motion, the observed frequency will not be equal to a thousand hertz. Okay? So that's what the Doppler shift is. It's, um, or the Doppler effect is. It's a shift. You can say the Doppler effect or the Doppler shift. It's the same thing, okay? Um, okay, so it's a shift in frequency when the source of a wave um, and the observer of a wave are in relative motion. Okay. Um, a shift in frequency when the source of a wave and the observer of a wave are in relative motion. Okay. Um, so if we think about the observed frequency, so let's try to explain why the Doppler effect happens. Okay. Um, if we if we think about the observed frequency. Um, from the equation v equals lambda f, all right, the observed frequency is going to be the observed speed of the wave. Um, it's going to be the speed of the wave divided by lambda, okay? Um, now, here's the thing, okay? So, um, what I want to talk about is I want to talk about the observer and the source separately, okay? If the observer is moving, okay, this will change the apparent speed of the wave. All right. Um, so if the observer is moving, this will change the apparent speed of the wave. Okay. Um, so for example, what if you had a sound wave? So you have a sound wave and sound waves travel at 340 meters per second, approximately, depending on the conditions. Okay. And what if the observer of the sound wave is also traveling to the right at 340 meters per second? Okay. Then from the perspective of that person, these waves don't make any progress. They don't get any closer to the observer. Okay, so um, from the observer's perspective, um, the wave is stationary. Right, because they're both going at the same speed, so the wave doesn't get any closer to the person or farther away from the person. Okay, so um, so what that means is, and and you could think about what if this person was going less than the speed of sound. For example, what if the person was going only at three hundred thirty meters per second? Then the wave is going to slowly gain ground on the person, on the observer. Okay, um, so this observer would actually see the wave coming up at 10 meters per second because that would be the difference between these two speeds. All right, it's the, the sound wave is going 10 meters per second faster than 
the um, than the observer. Okay, so basically, um, the speed of the wave changes when the observer is moving. Okay, because if the person is moving away from the wave, the wave appears to be going slower to that person. And if the person is moving towards the wave, the wave appears to be going faster. Okay. Um, it's kind of like if you have two cars that are both headed towards each other going 60 miles per hour. Okay. If you were riding on one of the cars, it looks like the other car is approaching you at 120 miles per hour right because you're both headed towards each other okay so when the observer is moving okay through a medium the wave looks like it's going at a, at a different speed that's different from 340 meters per second okay um, if the source of the wave is moving. Um, this will change the wavelength. Okay. Um, So let's see how that works. Well, if you have a source that's emitting waves and the source is not moving, what you will see is that the waves just come out in concentric circles like this. All right. Um, but if the source is moving, so what if we had a source that was, um, so now if these are the, the crests of the wave, then the wavelength would be this. This would be the wavelength, the distance between crests, okay? Um, if the source is moving this way, okay, then what will happen is on the leading side, of the source, the, the front side of the source, which would be the right side in this case, the waves are going to get scrunched together. So you'll have something that looks like this. Doing my best to draw this. Okay, so the waves are scrunched up on the side that is in the direction the, the source is moving. So you can see that on the other side, the wavelength on the trailing side of the source, the wavelength is greater than it was before. And on the leading side, the wavelength is shorter than it was before. Okay, so... Um, the wave when the source is moving, the wavelength is is changing, okay, um, and that's essentially because the source is chasing after the crest of the wave, okay. So, um, so the speed of the wave, the apparent speed of the wave changes when the observer is moving, and the apparent wavelength of the wave changes when the source is moving, okay? Um, now what we observe is that the way it works is if the source and the observer are getting closer As time goes on, all right, 
If the source and the observer are getting closer as time goes on, then the observed frequency of the wave is going to be um, greater than the emitted frequency. Okay. Um, all right. If the source in the observer are getting further apart, as time goes on, then the observed frequency is going to be less than the emitted frequency. Okay? Um, all right, so, so let's do some examples here. Uh, what if I had a source that, so here's the source right here, that's moving this way at, uh, let's say, 50 meters per second. And then I have the observer is also moving this way at 50 meters per second. Okay. In this case, the source and the observer are going to be staying the same distance apart because they both have the same speed and they're both traveling in the same direction. Okay. So in this case, the observed frequency of the wave is going to be equal to the emitted frequency. All right. Um, what if we have a situation where the um, source is moving this way at 50 meters per second? Okay. And the observer is moving this way at 100 meters per second. Okay, so you can see that the observer is basically chasing the source. Okay, and so they're going to be getting closer together because the observer is going faster than the source. So because they're getting closer together, in this case, the observed frequency is going to be greater than the emitted frequency. Okay. Um, what if we have a situation where the um, source is at rest and the observer is moving this way at 50 meters per second? Okay. Um, in that case, the source is at rest and the observer is traveling away, okay, from the, um, okay, the observer is traveling away from the source, so they're getting further apart, and so here the observed frequency is going to be less than the emitted frequency, okay? So that's how that works. You have to look at the relative motion and seeing if they are getting closer together or farther apart, and that would tell you what's going to happen to the frequency. So let me give you an equation. All right. Um, so the observed frequency of the wave is going to be the emitted frequency times a factor, okay, and that factor is V plus or minus speed of the observer divided by V plus or minus speed of the source. So this is the um, speed of the observer This is the speed of the source. All right. And V with no subscript is just the 
speed of the wave. Okay. Um, so in the case of sound, uh, which is what we're going to be talking about today, this will be 340 meters per second. Okay. Um, and so whether it's plus or minus, you basically have to use common sense. Okay. Um, and so I will show you, we're going to do several examples and I'll show you how that works. Okay. And by the way, these signs don't both have to be plus and both have to be minus or both have to be minus. You could have one plus and one minus or one minus and one plus. So I'll show you how to figure out what the signs are. Okay. Um, all right. And uh, one thing I want to point out, this equation, um, and I haven't showed you the derivation of this equation, um, just because I don't want to make half the class zone out if they're not into derivations. Um, I can show you during office hours, though, if you're interested. Um, but this equation does not take into account relativity, okay? So, for example, you might have heard of the theory of relativity, Einstein's theory of relativity. So, um, this only works if you have sort of like not light waves, not electromagnetic waves. So it works with sound waves, um, but light is traveling at the speed of light. So anytime you're traveling close to the speed of light or at the speed of light, the, th the theory of relativity becomes important. And so for that reason, um, this equation gets changed if we're talking about electromagnetic waves. So this is, so this equation doesn't work for electromagnetic waves. Such as light. Or radio waves or things like that. But it does work for um, sound waves. Okay, so that's that's what we're going to use this for. Okay. Um, so let's we're going to do two examples. So the first example is um, let's suppose an ambulance. emits, okay, um, an ambulance emits a siren of frequency um, 1,000 hertz, okay? Siren pass or uh, ambulance passes by at forty meters per second. Okay, so we're going to analyze this situation. So um, the observer is at rest. Okay, um, so we want to analyze this situation. You've probably, you've probably um, seen this situation before. You've heard this situation before. An ambulance goes by. You hear the Oh, that makes that makes boogers bark. Booger. Meow. 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 You did a good boy, Bobbers. 
Who knew the good boy? I think he thinks that sounds like a cat. It kind of sounds like meow. Meow. Um, okay. Let's get through the lesson. Um, all right, so here you are. Okay, here's the observer. We'll just say you're the observer, okay? And here's the ambulance, which is the source. And at first, the ambulance is going to be headed towards you at 40 meters per second, okay? This looks like it's on a collision course, but we'll say that it goes right by you, okay? And then afterwards, all right, um, you're right here. And then afterwards, the ambulance is moving away from you at 40 meters per second. Okay. Um, so what I want to do is I want to calculate what is the observed frequency on approach and then what is the observed frequency after. All right, so I'm going to be using this equation right here, okay? Um, so we have the emitted frequency, all right? So the emitted frequency is 1,000 hertz times a fraction, V and V, that's the speed of the wave, which because we're talking about sound waves is 340 meters per second. So I have 340 on the numerator, I have 340 on the denominator, okay? So this part is the same for both of these. All right, and furthermore, the observer is at rest, okay? So V sub O is going to be zero, so it doesn't matter if it's plus or minus for the observer. All right, so I'm just gonna put plus zero. All right, so now the question is, do we use plus or minus in each case? And what we wanna think about is, should the observed frequency go up or down? So what you do when you're determining the sign is you think about should the observed frequency be greater or less than the emitted frequency, okay? So this is on approach. On approach, we know that they're getting closer together, so the observed frequency should be above 1,000 hertz, okay? So when I'm looking at this, it could be plus or minus 40, where it's the speed of the source, okay? But if I want to make the ob observed frequency be above 1,000, I have to make the denominator smaller, because the smaller the denominator is, the bigger the number, right? So this has to be the minus sign, all right? So this is what I mean when I say you use common sense. You think about, should the frequency go up or down, and which sign choice is going to accomplish that? Okay, so the negative sign is the one that's going to make the observed frequency bigger. Okay, so this would be a thousand times the quantity 340 over 300 because I subtracted 40. All right, now here we have they're getting further apart. And so for that reason, um, the observed frequency is going to be less than 1,000. All right? Um, and so we want to make this 1,000 get smaller. And so to do that, we have to make the denominator bigger. All right? We have to make the denominator bigger because when the denominator gets bigger, we get a smaller and smaller number. So in this case, I'm going to add 40 because that would make the denominator bigger, okay? So I would have 
1,000 times 340 over 380. All right. Um, so if I compute both of these, Um, this is 1,133 hertz. Um, and then here we would get um, 894 hertz. All right. And this change would occur at the moment that the ambulance passes by, okay? So notice how the frequency is higher, it's higher pitched on approach and it's lower pitched afterwards and it changes at the moment that it, the ambulance crosses. So that's why you hear, okay? And if you were standing outside with a spectrum analyzer and you were recording the frequency, on approach and you were recording the frequency when it's going away from you you could actually calculate the speed of the source it's kind of cool oh bugger you did a stinker why did you do that bugger he always stands up after he farts it's really funny he'll be like laying down and he'll be like <clears throat> and then he'll like stand up right all of a sudden see now he's leaving um, okay, let's do another example where both the source and the observer are moving, okay? Um, all right, so uh, again, I'm just going to do that we have a source that is traveling this way at 100 meters per second. All right, and the observer is traveling this way at 200 meters per second. All right, and the emitted frequency is again, let's say a thousand hertz. Okay. Um, All right, so what we want to do is we want to figure out what is the observed frequency. So what I'm going to do, what I like to do when I'm solving Doppler effect problems is I like to plug in all the variables and then I'll decide my signs, my whether it's plus or minus, in the very end, okay? So what you can see is my observed frequency is going to be the emitted frequency, which is 1,000 hertz times speed of the wave, which is 340. Speed of the wave, 340. You can see in the numerator, I have the speed of the observer. So I'm gonna have 200 in the numerator. And in the denominator, I have speed of the source, which is 100 meters per second, like that. Okay. Um, and so now let's try and figure out the signs. Now, what you want to do when you look at the sign, you want to imagine that the other thing is at rest. So imagining that the observer is at rest, the source is trying to get closer to the observer. So the source is trying to raise the frequency. All right. So what that means, and because the source appears on the denominator, and the source is trying to raise the frequency, this is going to be a minus sign. Okay? Because the source is on the denominator, and making the denominator smaller will raise the frequency. Okay, so do you understand how I made that choice? I, I know that the source, the source's motion is trying to raise the observed frequency. Making the denominator smaller would accomplish that, and so that's why I chose a minus sign, okay? Now, if I look at the observer, 
if I imagine that the source is at rest and I look at the observer, the observer is trying to get away from the source. The observer is trying to get further away from the source. Okay? Um, and so that means that the observer's motion is going to tend to reduce the frequency. Okay? So I have the option of a plus or a minus right here for the observer. If I made it a plus, that would make the numerator bigger, which would raise the frequency. But the observer's motion is trying to reduce the frequency. So I'm going to choose a minus because that'll make the numerator smaller. Okay. And the numerator is where the observer's speed is. Okay. So that's why I choose a minus sign. So what I'll get is a thousand times um, 140 over 240. And that's 583 hertz is the observed frequency. So I hope that makes sense. Um, and it should also make sense with intuition because the source is chasing the observer and they're getting further apart. So the observed frequency should be less than a thousand because they're getting up, up apart. They're getting further apart as time goes on. All right. So how you do that is you look at each one individually and see what is its motion going to accomplish. Um, I did want to give a little demo of the Doppler effect. I don't know if it's going to be, um, if you guys will be able to perceive it. Um, but so I have my tone generator. Okay. I'm going to play a thousand hertz. Okay. A thousand hertz. And I'm going to. Um, I'm going to whirl my phone around like this. Okay. See if you can hear the Doppler effect. So what you should have heard, and maybe there's lag. I should just. Um, maybe there's lag, but when the phone is swinging towards you, you're going to hear a higher frequency, and when it's swinging away from you, it's you should hear a lower frequency. Okay, let's try it again. Now here's. Here's the interesting thing, okay? I don't hear the Doppler effect from my perspective. Why is that? Because the phone is moving in a circle and my head is basically at the center of the circle, okay? So the distance between my head and the phone isn't changing because it's moving in a circle around my head. So because I'm not getting any closer to the um, to the phone or farther away from it, I don't hear the Doppler shift. But you guys do because my microphone is there and when I swing it like this, it's getting closer and when I swing it like this, it's getting further away. Now here's something interesting too. What if I turn and I now swing it this way? If I swing it like this, the, the phone isn't getting any closer or further away from the microphone. So if I do this, you guys should not. So you're going to hear either no Doppler effect or a lot less Doppler effect. Okay, so let's see if that's true. So now you should hear it if I do this. So hopefully that worked. It's a little demonstration for you. Um, all right. So that's my lesson for today. And I will see you.